Hello again, folk of the YouTube. Uh, welcome back. And uh, today, what I wanted to go through with you and talk about is painting non-metallic metal. Um, doing gold was the approach that I wanted to do here. And I should give credit where credit's due that I learned a little bit of this by watching videos by a fellow named Mr. Watching Paint Dry. So I'll put something into the follow-up to show you where to find his work. Now, many years ago, I tried this out and doing it on flat surfaces. The armor is not non-metallic gold here, but the hammer symbol on the banner is. And that's something that I was pretty pleased with at the time. Um, but looking back upon it now, it looks a little bit blank and empty. Um, this horse one may be a little bit better, but I certainly wanted to improve on this and do it on a three-dimensional surface to see that I could achieve some more realistic looking effects. So for today, we are going to focus more on doing non-metallic gold. But of course, doing non-metallic gold means that you're using brown tones instead of actual metallics. So here's a look at the colors that we used. XV88 was the first base coat. Uh, we do a wash with Agric Earth Shade. Then some Baylor Brown for the first layer. Averlin Sunset is what I use for the higher layer. And then finally some white for the absolute highlights. Another rediscovery for me was using a wet palette. Um, I bought this a couple years back, but I don't use it too much. It was pretty valuable here though, because I wanted to make these blends and transitions pretty soft on the model. So if you don't have one of these, it's pretty simple. It is a piece of parchment paper over top of a mildly wet sponge. And then you put it into some kind of casing that you can close up. And it's good enough so that you can actually close this down and come back to it a day or even two days later and your paint is still going to be moist. Okay, so let's get into it here. Um, I painted the bird first, but the first layer for the armor of the gold here, I put down the XV88 and did a full coverage. Uh, now the stage that you're at here is after I've done the Agrex Earthshade Wash. Be very generous about this. Don't worry about doing it too overloaded. Um, it can be real heavy. The next stage, of course, is with the Baylor Brown. Now this is the point where you're trying to start to be selective about where the paint goes. You have to choose a perspective. And in this case, I've chosen effectively from your view, the upper left corner of the screen with the light coming from that direction and shining down. So when you apply the paint, you're trying to keep that in mind. So the things that are further away from that are going to be left darker. This concept, of course, is one of the trickiest things about doing non-metallic metal is trying to understand on the flip side of things or on the opposite side of where the light source goes, how it's going to react and respond. You have to play with it. And I don't know that I have any particular formula, but using some reference material and looking at other work done, even black and white drawings. And I looked at army books for this kind of thing to get that perspective to help me out a little bit with that. So being that the last stage was the trickiest part, determining that light perspective, when you come now to doing the Averland Sunset color, you're really just highlighting where you laid down the previous stuff, but of course leaving a little bit of transition with it. Still be bold here. It's okay to put the uh, your, your strokes fairly heavy, um, and then you'll build up that color and, and more of the transition between the first color you laid down and the, and also the wash as well. So now moving on to the brightest highlight. And I actually did a, a mix here of the Sunset Yellow, or Averland Sunset rather, uh, with some white to get a bit of a cream color. I'll show it here on my wet palette. And uh, again, you're, you're sharpening up the, the high points of light and, and really, again, thinking about the perspective of the direction that's coming. Looking at the kind of things that you'll see is on the, uh, the feathers, so to speak. You have on the left side, uh, a highlight on the top of those feathers and then on the right side on the bottom side. A couple other things about the lance that you can look at there is that it starts with the brightest right near the guy's hand and then gets a little bit fading towards the end of it. Uh, and then also on the shield, it's the curvature of the shield. You have to sort of work with that to appropriate it to the higher highlights right in the middle of the shield going down the middle. So here's the finished project then. If you want to pause here to drink it all in, uh, be, be welcome to it. Again, this is an exercise in kind of forced perspective. And with being bold and, and exaggerating about this, it's the kind of model that I find in the end 
um, after the several hours work on it. Looks really good at arm's length on the battlefield and it's going to be striking and grab some people's attention. When you get real close into it, it looks a little bit bizarre, especially when you start spinning it around and looking at it from different angles. Good project for me though, and a good experiment, so I hope that some of you are willing to give this a go. So after doing the guy riding the eagle, I decided to go in and tackle Karadrian and try the same techniques on him. The difference with this guy though is that we had, I did a lot more uh, gold on his back throne, which we'll have a bit of a look at here. Um, had to sort of artificially do some other gradients there towards the middle and, and really, really work the wet palette a lot more than I did on the prior one um, to get that sort of a blend. The other challenges that I had with him is there was a lot more silver on him that I wanted to try and this was tougher to do, tougher to get a gradient on and I don't know that I'm convinced looking at it now that it looks as silver as I want it to. It still really does look kind of gray and I have to suffer the consequences of that, I guess, or get better at it. Well, through that whole process, I don't know that that was a whole lot of a good teaching video. Um, quite honestly, you'd probably need to do some color theory and, and light study to, to really appreciate how that kind of lighting technique works for doing non-metallic stuff. I, again, would like to reiterate and encourage you to go look at Mr. Watching Paint Dry. He's the fellow that I got this little bit of inspiration to give it a try from. And I hope that in combination with what I've done here and tried out and experimented with, that might give you a little bit of inspiration at least to give it a try and find things that work for yourself. So again, hope that was worthwhile for some of you. And uh, we'll see you another time.